We're back at Station 9 with Fire Captain Jack Parisho for an in-depth look at all the tools a tech truck has to offer. Hi, this is Jack Parisho. Welcome back to Truck 9. It's a USAR truck, and I'm going to have Robert and Dan Goodwin Jr. talk about the truck today. But first, let me tell you that uh, this is one of our newer Suffins. It's a sister truck is at Truck 34, and it is 100 foot compared to the other Suffins, which are uh, 90 footers. Uh, that extra 10 feet, uh, really nice to have. Um, it drives just like the other Suffin, so if you're used to driving the old Suffin, this is no big deal. Only that the basket is high off the ground, so you don't have to worry so much about hitting things in the rear from low points, but you do have to worry about signs and balconies and apartment complexes. So I'm gonna hand it over to Robert, and we'll start going over uh, compartments and what's different and unique about the USAR equipment on this truck. Everything else is standard on a, uh, on a standard truck company. Thanks Jack, my name is Robert Frick, I'm the engineer on Truck 9 on the B-Shift and today we're going to go over all the compartments and some of the tech truck specific tools that we carry on this rig. Your standard medical aid compartment with hand tools, this is shoring compartment with our Paratech shores, scissor jack, come along. This is our uh, vehicle extrication compartment, up above we have our standard hose complement for wildland fires and cribbing. We've got an extensive uh, rope complement with rigging. Up above, we have our Stokes basket and an Arizona Vortex, and another compartment for ropes and rigging. Now we're gonna take the tools out that are specific to the tech truck, and we'll go over those. Okay, this is the majority of the uh, equipment that came out of our uh, shoring compartment. Uh, we've got Paratech struts, and they're taking the place of the Rescue 42s. With these, it gives us a little more extension and uh, height, and considerably more strength. We've got various heads and bases. Depending on the application, if we need something flat, we're, we're uh, shoring up or need to uh, secure something that's flat. We've got a nice secure base here that will go on top of the strut. Um, small bases, much like the Rescue 42s where you've got your handle to secure your, uh, your ratchet strap to pull these things together and provide stability for a, a vehicle on its side or such. Um, we've got a hook cluster. This is uh, primarily used in the towing industry that allows the uh, person that's towing to make access or connect to the frame rail of the vehicle and allows us to do the same thing. Paratech hammer, basically this is like a multi-tool. Um, it acts much like a spanner with this little knob here to tighten down the collars on the Paratech struts. Your standard ratchet strap for tightening the uh, Paratechs together, much like you'd see with the Rescue 42s. The 2010 Sutfins came with a 10,000 pound rated uh, eye for repelling. We can just plug this in like a trailer hitch and uh, off to the race as we go. After the uh, Occupy movement, we were given these, the Dremel tool and a grinder for using angelic operations that we may have to cut off some handcuffs or people that have joined their hands inside a, a plastic cylinder filled full of cement. A scissor lift can be deployed within less than a minute and we can have a vehicle lifted a lot faster than we can deploy and set up our airbags. We've got an electric impact wrench that operates this really quick or manually with this wrench here. This rabbit tool allows us to gain access to a vehicle or a door jam where we have a very tight space and this is about a quarter inch of steel that we can uh, jam into that crack and with hydraulic force we can spread that to a larger opening so that either we can get an airbag or uh, the jaws in there to, uh, to spread it open. This is the Tele light, something brand new that's on the truck, and I'm gonna have uh, probationary firefighter Jason Kramer, he's gonna give you a little class on this. This is a, a new light found on uh, tech trucks, our heavy, and also uh, our fire investigators have these lights as well. It's a tripod light uh, fueled by a, an ion battery. It can be 99 inches tall, it has three light functions, low, medium, and high. If you look on the back here, you just have one switch, and you're just gonna hit that three times, the fourth one turning the light off. You rotate it back this way. This is your uh, charging port. Comes both with the AC and DC, and it takes seven hours to charge. Um, extending this, you're gonna move this up. There's a, a clamp here that you're gonna have to loosen, and then there's two more, so you just loosen these, it'll lift up. It also, in its name, it's 360, so you could turn these and or have them pointed in just one direction. It also has light diffusers, 
that you can move up and down, uh, indicating on where you want your light to dissipate, as well as this little cam right here, we'll loosen it up and allow it to tilt back 45 degrees and forward 45 degrees for a total of 90 degrees adjustment. Okay, uh, here's our rope compartment, and the biggest thing or difference you'll see is a 600 foot rope bag here that uh, we may use in a tension diagonal would be a good application for this. This is unique to this truck. Um, your standard uh, rigging bag, um, there's a couple variations or things that you might see in here and not recognize. Um, with your MPD, we do have a double shreve pulley that you can open and put into your system without taking the whole system apart. It's basically this push button, slides over, slide your rep in, slide it back in and you're in business. Another thing that is unique to this bag is our uh, pickoff strap and harness. We would use this in a uh, remote rescue situation. Uh, we'll go ahead and grab this one. This will also be found on the helicopter. And if we are uh, not getting reports that the person that is in distress, there's no trauma involved, and that simply they need help out, they're lost or dehydrated, we can go ahead and put this on. And basically this, uh, this is a pelvic harness that we can carry on with us to make it uh, extrication and extract that patient into, back into the helicopter. We have a high point bag, and this is all miscellaneous rigging and uh, webbing that you, we may need to set up a high point using the aerial. Also in this miscellaneous rigging compartment, we've got some fall protection that's pre-rigged. This can be used with the Arizona Vortex if we are going down in a confined space and you're near the hole or manhole cover that's open and we want uh, you in some type of fall protection to make sure you're not going to fall down in there. Um, this will be connected to a harness that you're wearing and it's pre-rigged and adjustable so you can make fine adjustments behind your back uh, and adjust your position to the hole. Now, these are a set of fours. Basically it's just a mechanical advantage, the small version. Primary use of these would be uh, adjustable uh, harness for the Stokes basket so that we can manipulate the basket up and down and all around just by making simple adjustments with this. This straps on around your waist like a fanny pack and if you need it you've got it strapped around you and uh, okay. Also in the miscellaneous uh, compartment here you'll find a uh, helo pack and we might take this with us on any remote rescue that's uh, in, towards the evening hours that we may get stuck out there. It's got a space blankets for warmth. It's got extra water in there for us or the patient. It also has some extra granola bars and such if, if we need them. We've got some pre-tied anchor straps. We have some long ones and some medium and some short straps. My name is Danny Goodwin and I'm here to go over the Arizona Vortec. First off, just parts of the components of it. You have your feet, your legs. We have an extension or a flute and the head of it. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons we'd use this is for a high point or over the side. Um, we have it set up right now in the lazy leg or the easel leg. And what this is, is to break the force of a rescuer and a victim over the side. So to bring them up and over without driving them into the ground. Because if it was we had a rope over the side, we'd be driving them over the ground, lifting them up. Uh, another configuration we use this in is a tripod. So over a manhole cover, if we have a, risk, a rescuer and a victim, to pull them straight up and out that way. Only use our personnel will be using this and setting it up and uh, running this operation because of its inherent risks. Thanks, uh, frickin' Goody and Firefighter Kramer. Uh, one last item I'd like to talk about is our uh, large animal rescue sled system. It wasn't on the USAR rig because it's uh, too large. You can see that it's uh, two sleds that lay on the ground that we pull the third sled over the top of so we can take it over uh, rocks, uh, grass, uh, what, what have you. Uh, it can also be used for moving any other heavy objects that you think you could come up with that we need to slide along the ground. Uh, if you have any questions, um, chiefs, firefighters, anything in between, please don't hesitate to call any of your USAR trucks. This is uh, your toolbox and these are some of the unique tools in it. Uh, so please give us a call.